Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of a microphone right out of the UK, so go ahead and grab yourself a cup of tea. That microphone is the Aston Spirit, although I do have the Aston Spirit Black Bundle. It's a limited edition one, same microphone, just a different finish. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $450. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i20 2nd Gen. My gain is set just at around 1230. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box and God save the Queen! I don't know. What a surprise, you are going to get the microphone. You'll have a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter in the microphone already. You'll get a shock mount, which comes with a second 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. You'll get a pop filter, which clips on to the shock mount, some documentation, a pin, and a sticker. <clears throat> Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels extremely well put together. I have no real complaints about it. It has an all metal body. It has a metal grill and behind that grill, it has this malleable mesh metal wind protection in there. It weighs in at 625 grams. On the front of the mic, you'll find three switches, one being a pad to switch between negative 10, negative 20, or zero dB. You will find an 80 hertz high pass filter, and you'll find a polar pattern selection switch to go between cardioid, omnidirectional, and figure eight. Then on the bottom of the microphone, you will find a standard 5 8 inch threading to mount this directly to a stand. It does come with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch stand adapter, and you'll find the XLR port, and this is made in the UK. Then as far as the specs, this mic has a cardioid, omnidirectional, and figure eight polar patterns. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 32 and a half dB, a self noise of 14 dBA, a max SPL of 138 dB, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Now I am spinning around the Aston Spirit on the cardioid polar pattern. Here's how it sounds at 90 degrees. Continuing around to 180 degrees, here's the rear of the microphone. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, and then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now I am spinning around the microphone on omnidirectional, and I am at 90 degrees, moving around to 180 degrees. And as I move around the microphone, you should hear very minimal change to the tone of my voice. But now I am back at the front of the mic. And lastly, we are on the figure eight polar pattern, and I will rotate around to 90 degrees, which should be a very dead area. Continuing around to 180 degrees, you should have another lobe of sensitivity right here. You should hear me pretty well. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, or the second dead area, and then rotating and ending at the front of the mic again. Now let's see how well this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto, Please bring pizza pronto. 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 Now I am right on top of the spirit to really accentuate the proximity effect. I do not have the high pass filter engaged and here is how it sounds. And now I have engaged the 80 hertz high pass filter. I am at the same distance really engaging that proximity effect. And here is how the audio compares. Now I am right on top of the microphone and here is how it sounds. About three inches away with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how the spirit sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you lonely girl 15 gamers out there, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room.
And now to see how well the provided shock mount performs, I am bumping the desk to see how much of that noise it rejects. And I'll tap the boom arm. And now I'll go ahead and tap the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I want to do a very quick comparison between the Aston Spirit and a couple of other microphones on the market so we can see how it compares to its competition. Of course I will start on the Aston Spirit. I am on the cardioid mode, no filters engaged. My gain is set at 1230 and I am six inches off of this thing and here is how it sounds. First off, I'm on the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is a $100 electric condenser microphone. I am six inches off, gain is still set at 1230, and here is how it compares against a $450 condenser microphone. We are back on the Aston Spirit, still six inches away, still gain set at 1230. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted each of these mics. Here is how it sounds, let's jump to another one. Now we are on the crowd favorite, the Neat King B. This goes for about $130. I am at the same distance, same gain setting, 1230. And here is how a $130 condenser microphone sounds like compared to a $450 multi-pattern condenser microphone from the UK. We are back on the Aston Spirit, and I have been locked inside for over six months. I am not losing my mind at all, but here is how this microphone sounds. Let's jump to another one so you can compare it to that. And now I am on the little baby sibling thing of the Aston Spirit, the Aston Origin. This goes for $300. It is cardioid only, no filters engaged. Same distance, same gain setting, 1230. Here is how a $300 condenser sounds compared to the $450 condenser. Do they sound the same? Let me know in the comments down below. I don't know what else to say, but I'm back on the Aston Spirit, same distance, same gain setting. I'm back on this so you can hear how it sounds before we jump to another mic and compare it to that. Now I am on the Shure KSM44A. This is a multi-pattern condenser microphones with the exact same polar patterns as the Aston Spirit, omnidirectional, cardioid, and figure eight. Same distance, same gain setting, no filters engaged. And here is how a $1,000 multi-pattern condenser microphone sounds like compared to a $450 multi-pattern condenser microphone. There you go, Shure KSM 44A. And I think this may be the last mic we're comparing it to, but we're back on the Aston Spirit. Here is how it sounds, cardioid mode, no filters, gain 1230, six inches off. Let's jump to the last mic so you can hear how this mic compares to that. And lastly, we do need to compare the Aston Spirit to another multi-pattern condenser microphone. Now I am on the AKG C414 XLS. This goes for about $1,070 or $1,100. Same distance, same gain setting, cardioid polar pattern, no filters engaged. And here is how it compares. Do you think it sounds three times better than the Spirit? But more importantly, of all of the microphones that I compared this Spirit against, which one did you like the best, or do you think the Spirit is the winner in this quick vocal shootout? Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> I'm so tired all the time But I must review these mics Because they won't review themselves And there's only one way to tell which one you'll like 
and that is by you doing proper research, reading, and listening. You are the one who needs to determine which microphone is right for you. This has been your weekly PSA with Bandrew. I hate myself. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, when I was ordering the Spirit, I was expecting to get the exact same sound as the Aston Origin, just with a couple of additional polar patterns, but after testing it out and getting to know it for a little bit, I think it's quite a different sound and quite a big step up from the Little Brother. And first up in terms of pros, on the note of the Aston Origin, I think the Spirit offers a much more even sound that is far less top-heavy and quite a bit more pleasing. The build quality of the microphone also feels excellent, and it's built in the UK, which is always great to see. Additionally, the microphone did a surprisingly good job at rejecting plosives, even without the provided pop filter, and the microphone is completely dead, and there are no resonant frequencies whatsoever. It is dead. It's amazing. You're not going to have any resonances interfering with your recording. And then as far as cons, I'm really not too keen on the accessories. With the pop filter, I broke the mounting system within 30 minutes of using it. And when you have the microphone mounted in the shock mount, it starts to sag and droop a little bit to the point where the microphone ends up resting on the switches on the mic. And I would be worried about that affecting the longevity of it. But even though the shock mount doesn't have a death grip on the microphone, it does do a pretty good job at rejecting shocks and bumps of the desk or the mic stand. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I found the top end to be very open sounding, but it doesn't come across as top heavy. It just captures a lot of information in the treble and air frequencies, and it does it pretty well. The mids are nice and neutral, they're not overly forward, they're not scooped, and the low end is incredibly controlled. All around for the electric guitar, it offers a very clean sound that I was quite impressed with. Then on the acoustic guitar, I would just say top end, top end, top end. It is a detailed, articulate, and open and airy sound. And then you have the mids and the lows, which are unoffensive. They just sit there nicely to support this beautiful top end, and I really enjoyed it on the acoustic guitar. I thought it was a great and very lively sound. Next up for singing, I think this offers a very airy sound, and I think this is the sound that most people would call modern. It's not mid-forward, it's not dark, it's not the smoothest. It is articulate, detailed, airy it has all this top end information and i think that's what a lot of people look for in modern microphones the mids they do not have nasaliness to them which is kind of prevalent in more vintage sounding microphones the low end is controlled it's not overpowering but you can get a lot of it if you get right on top of the microphone and don't hit yourself in the face with a shock mount all around a very modern sounding singing microphone if that's what you're looking for. And lastly for spoken word, the low end on this microphone doesn't really give you the voice of God, but you can get quite a bit of weight to it if you eat the microphone. The mids, nice, neutral, natural sounding, not over boosted, not cut, not recessed, and the top end detailed, articulate. It captures all that information in your voice If you're looking for a microphone to smooth out some harshness in your voice and help you out, this is not going to do you any favors. It captures all of the top end of your voice, and that's what it does. (laughs) So just know that going in if you're buying this. If you're looking for help up there, it's not going to give it to you. But if you want all of that information, it will do that. And to wrap up, would I recommend this microphone? Both yes and no. If you're looking for a vintage, smooth, dark sounding microphone, no, this is not a microphone for you. It is not designed to do that, and it does not do that. Go look somewhere else. This is not the mic for you. This is not the microphone you're looking for. But on the other hand, if you are looking for that more modern sound, which has that articulate, detailed, open, and airy sound to it, kind of having a shimmer or a shine in the top end, caused by a big treble and air boost, 
then yes, I would recommend it because it does that and it does it well. And if you were looking at the Origin and you have an extra $150, I think the improvement to the sound is worth it. It is less top heavy and more balanced sounding. And when you have that big boost in the upper frequencies, I think it's essential to have something to offset that and not be completely focused up in the upper frequencies. All right, I think that's going to wrap up for today, but I want to hear from you in the comments down below. Which of the microphones did you like the best? Did you like the Spirit, the Origin, the King B, the 414, 44A, blah, 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 blah. Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thump, big old thumbs down. Want to hang out in the Discord server? Podcastage.com slash Discord. If you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. Until next time, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for listening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.